So I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Tom Sarrar, who, like some of my heroes in photography, uh, allegedly is self-taught. Is that, is that true? Um, self-taught. Well, I, I joined uh, my local weekly paper in the northeast um, uh, of England, the Berwick Advertiser, um, when I was 17. Um, and got thrown out on the street the next day with a, an old yeshika mat to, you know, um, take pictures. So up to that point, you've never actually used the camera at all? No, I never. I never had a camera. Oh, really? It wasn't a, you it was know, like, it, this there's thing. a camera, Off that's how it works. Put it in focus and go and shoot Bonnie Babies, I think it was, right, was okay. the, um, what, what I was shooting. So stopping young mums with their babies to take pictures and then run them in the local Bonnie paper. Bonnie Babies in Berwick. Bonnie Babies in Berwick. Right, okay. But, um, you know, I, I realised that second day in, I'd never want to do anything else. So working as freelance for the newspapers, uh, certainly around Fleet Street, so you had to do a bit of everything, um, some hard news, maybe some soft news. But I noticed you sort of gravitated more towards the hard issues um, of, of the day. So was that a conscious decision? Um, well, I always wanted to shoot pictures that, you know, I was the author. I didn't want to just fill holes in a newspaper that, um, you know, that write, reporters had written about. So um, I did want to do photo essays and not just single images. Mm -hmm. and, and I did gravitate to, uh, to doing that. And, you know, serious issues of the day uh, interest me. So obviously that's what I've been trying to mm -hmm. uh, document. Would you say there was a, sort of a big breakthrough moment for you in terms of that type of material that you were shooting? There wasn't a breakthrough moment, but I remember going to Beirut in 1982 to cover um, the siege of Beirut when the Israelis were bombing Yasser Arafat. And many years later, I uh, spent a lot of time documenting the siege of Sarajevo, which, um, uh, you know, the pictures I got there, I think, were, are some of the, you know, the best I've shot. So you've been present with some pretty historic moments in time, particularly the Berlin Wall coming down. Um, tell us about that. So literally, I've just stepped off a plane from Berlin, where I've been for the last week. Um, uh, I, I was lucky enough to be on the Berlin Wall on November the 9th, 1989, when the very first people came through Checkpoint Charlie. Um, and I've had this idea to try and find them. It's, you know, what happened to them in the last 25 years? How did their life change? Um, after that uh, amazing evening. So I've been sticking posters on lampposts, uh, appealing for um, people to come forward if they, if they uh, see themselves and, and to contact me so I can go back and you know, interview them and re-photograph them. Have you had any response yet? It's, um, it's early days. Uh, you know, we, we wanted, I've only just come back and they're still, uh, still filtering through. But... In my heart, I think I don't think we'll find anyone because really no people would have gone all over the world. And but if I do find three or four people, it'll be making a, f a fantastic feature. As a photographer, I've noticed how versatile you are. You know, you've done your, your reportage and your portraiture, but you've moved also into advertising. Uh, that must be a completely different challenge. Well, editorial and advertising are totally different, but in a way, you're still trying to on in either. Uh, genre, you're trying to make uh, powerful and effective photographs. So from that point of view, they're, they're similar. One of the uh, campaigns I found absolutely fascinating was the International Committee of the Red Cross. And that was an amazing shoot. And I've seen the making of that shoot. Um, and, and one of the things that was going through my head was, was, yes, it's not real, but you're actually saying something really important um, and does that sort of compromise editorial integrity because this isn't actuality it's like it was but you know it's not well the ad campaign for the uh, icrc was a, a fantastic opportunity um uh, i i think i i got the work from them because you know i've been in the, those situations i've been in refugee camps i've seen them work uh, firsthand i know the the terrific uh, work they do worldwide um but this was a commercial campaign. We couldn't go into the field and shoot it for real. So uh, it was all done in, you know, in studios with lights and with a team. And uh, um, it was challenging. The ICRC have got very high standards. Um, they are very particular about accuracy uh, to the point where they had one of the uh, field surgeons working with us to make sure everything we... Um, there was a meticulous uh, attention to detail, wasn't there? There was. It, it, um, 
and it's very challenging. You know, it's, you, you're desperately trying to give them what they need, um, but still, ha still create powerful images that you're happy with. Um, and that's one of the, the hardest things about advertising, you know, to, you've got to handle it, that um, your pictures might not be used in the way that you want them to be. They, they, there's post-production on them, there's, um, you know, they're not real, mm -hmm. but they still have to be powerful and they still have to move people and they still have to be effective. And um, it, it's, um, it, it's challenging, but when it works, and I think that campaign did work, um, it's, it's very pleasing. So, so what's next for Tom Stoddart? Well, more of the same, really. Um, I'm looking for something interesting where I can just pack a small bag with a couple of Leicas and three or four lenses and go off and, um, you know, make a photo essay that's uh, interesting to me. And if it's interesting to me, hopefully uh, people might buy it. Well, given post journalism is a subject very close to my heart, I'd just like to thank you very, very much for joining us. Thanks very much, Matt.